Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Strasbourg. My name is Ilza Nagla and today we will be talking about new generation of politicians. Not only in Latvia but also in other countries, people sometimes say that they are tired of the old politicians who have failed them. The question is, have, can the new ones make a difference? And today I'm joined by two young MEPs. Uh, Niklas Ninas is from Germany and uh, here in the European Parliament you are from the political group of, uh, of the Greens. Right. Yes. Very nice to have you here. Thank you very much. And I'm also joined by Jaak Madison. He's from Estonia and here in European Parliament he represents Identity and Democracy Group. Very nice to have you here as well. Nice to you inviting me. Uh, you represent uh, two political sides of the political spectrum. You are from the left and you are from the right. And my apologies, but I also have to mention your age to the viewers. You are 29 and you are 30. And you are not even the youngest MEPs here in the European Parliament. The youngest, if I'm not mistaken, is a Danish MEP who is 23. So my question is, how easy or difficult it is to be elected in the European Parliament for a young politician without much of the political career uh, uh, beforehand, because some of them here are former ministers, former prime ministers. So how easy or difficult was it for you? <clears throat> it always depends about the country. It's very different. So it means the like political system uh, is very different, like in, in Greece and Spain or in Estonia and Latvia. It's like we know very well that the average age for the politicians or members of the parliament in Greece is like 35 plus, at least 35 plus. And then it's getting older and older. Uh, on the same time, I think it's not like the easiest thing also in Germany and as, or in Estonia. And it hasn't to be like very easy actually, because always to, that the final you have to get like the support from the public. You have to get support from the voters that they can be convinced that it's the right choice to elect for a younger person. So it means that you need some kind of, of course, improvement before that what you have done. Uh, for like for me personally, it was. Uh, I was selected to the national parliament when I was 23. So I was one term in national parliament, then I got re-elected to the national parliament. Uh, we got to the government. Uh, I was a few months for the chairman of, of the uh, committee of the constitutional affairs. And then we had the EU elections and I was elected to the European parliament. So for the public, it was easy to vote for me because like they already knew me like for the last five, six years. Um, but it's, it's, it's not always so easy, but I think it's not easy for, for nobody, even if you are 50 plus, it's not so easy to convince the public that, hey, vote for me on the, on the EU elections. And how was your experience with the elections? My experience is a little bit different. So I was elected the first time to the European Parliament. I've never been elected to a political uh, post before. Um, but of course, I was active in party politics. And our party is a party that is very, um, uh, has, has structures that are letting people do what they like to do. So meaning if you're interested in com communal um, uh, politics in your city or anything, uh, you can do that. Um, when you're interested in national politics, you can do that. And if you're interested in uh, European politics, you can also do that. In other parties, it's often the way, that, as you described, that you have to start at the local level, then you go to the next one, and then once you've proven there, you can go to the next one, and then at the end, you can finally reach uh, the highest level, which is the European level. And I believe it's the wrong choice because um, if you're interested in European politics, but you have to start with the city level, um, you, you are wasting some talent um, that is needed somewhere else and the, the other way around as well. And but I think on it the really other hand, I mean, it's, it's maybe too easy if a young person says, well, I'm 20 something, I want to be a, a member of the European Parliament and here you go. No, I, I prove to the party that I am uh, that I know what I'm talking about. That I have I, I studied the European law. I was interested in the topic. I was talking about the, the development of rural areas and the the uh, cohesion of Europe, so that we can ensure that all over Europe there are the same opportunities. Those are my topics, and my party approved that this was important topics to put on the list. And I think that's the way to go to ensure that everybody can participate. And that's the question of how does the party actually do that, does that, and how do they involve everybody, and do they value people even though they don't spend years and years and years to prove themselves over and over again, but also to trust them a little bit. And I think that's very important that is missing a lot of um, parties, even though that we, I hope, show that if you trust politicians to be young as well, they can also um, bring new voter, um, p uh, voter group because young people tend to like it more to be represented by younger people because we, of course, share 
a common backstory and more a little bit a, a reality. For example, we grew up with the internet, whereas our grandparents uh, used the typewriter for everything. And I think that is something where, where voters also share, and so parties will understand that young people need to be in politics. But you have to fight your way through also the, the party list, right? If, if you're young, there are some older politicians who also want to be elected in the European Parliament. So you were not the first one on, on your party's list either, right? Well, at this time, it was 2019 in April, May. It was a much more complicated thing for us. Uh, we were entering the government, so our chairman was the first number in the party list, uh, but he became as a minister of interior affairs. And the second number was also the vice chairman of the party. I'm also vice chairman of the party, but he was, uh, he, he was uh, um, elected as a minister of financial affairs. So, uh, and then it was for the voters, for the party supporters, it was pretty difficult. Okay, are we going to support the first number who's going to the government anyway? Or are we are voting for, for the candidate who's going for sure to the European Parliament? And, uh, and uh, it was my free choice uh, to be the last number. Uh, so it means that in Estonia now we have only seven MEPs. We had six at this time. After, now after the Brexit we have one more. And in our, in, in our system, the system is like that you can have, uh, the list can be like the, how many MEPs can be elected from this country, plus two. So it was seven plus two, so the party list was uh, nine candidates from the party. And I, I, I told to the party that, hey, I want to be the last one, because it doesn't matter for me, uh, I'm the third one or the fifth one or the last one, because I have my own campaign, uh, I have my own supporters, and I can be elected even if I'm the last one. And well, I got... Yeah, three times and you more. Got elected. Three times more votes than the first number. So, uh, but it, it always depends. Like, like if we couldn't go to the government, it means that if we could uh, stay in the opposition, uh, of course, the first number could have much more votes because the voter knows, okay, you are not in the government, you are not the minister. So it means we can support the first number, the party chairman, uh, to be elected to the parliament. It will be much more. So it means that in the politically, it's always, it's always very complex. Uh, system that it depends about the popularity for the party, your own popularity, uh, the political situation inside of the country, uh, about mm. the rhetoric, uh, political statements, the campaign, how you how you are doing before the campaign. And so, by the way, also the voting system, because in Germany we have a different voting system. You cannot vote for single persons on the list, but only for the list as a whole. Yeah, that's so correct. if you would have competed in Germany, you you wouldn't have the chance to exactly over because you're the last one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think we have, it, it's the closed list system. And, and I think we had the closest system first EU elections 2004. Uh, so it means that you, know, you have to be in the, in the top of the list uh, to be elected. And then we changed this because, like, well, it's, it's uh, like it can be fair for the parties, but unfair for the candidates. Nice. And now it's like it, it's the list finally, at the end of the day, after elections, it, it changed all the time. So it means how many votes you're getting. So it, you, you can race to the, to the first stop uh, if okay. you get more votes. But that depends, of course, on the, on the, exactly. yeah, so it's very the system. Uh, you brought up the, the, the topic that uh, young people use more social media. What do you think? Can you be elected only by using social media? Or do you have to do also the old style campaigning and uh, go out and meet pe people, real people in a sort of Real situations. Yeah, I mean, uh, even if you're using social media, you're still meeting real people. I mean, there's not like <laughs> it's not like there's a computer behind uh, the screen, but really there's a person that you're speaking to. So the social media is just a different um, uh, place to talk to people, basically. Um, meaning that you wouldn't ask if people aren't stop going to uh, the marketplace or anything, right? That that's where you meet people. But of course, you need you need both, and I think you also don't just need uh, social media, but also something um, to talk about. And you need to, to do good work in Parliament in order to ensure um, that people uh, know you. And in the end, it's also about um, uh, a, good, uh, a good vision and good rhetoric. Because if you are having a great social media um, account and doing great TikTok dances, people still will question whether you will be a good uh, MEP because it's not your quality of dancing that it's necessary in the exactly. Parliament. Might become useful maybe there. but. <laughs> Uh, but, we, I mean, here in the European Parliament, uh, this time there are 60% are uh, new MEPs, MEPs who never have been elected in the European Parliament. Do you feel the difference? They're like, uh, first they're like new MEPs and also a lot of young MEPs. Do you feel the difference between you and the, the old guys who have been in the European Parliament, you know, previous, uh, previous times uh, for many years? We are 
actually we are in a very different situation now because for the last almost two years we have had COVID. <laughs> so it means that we couldn't have like for at least for the last one half year, we're going to have normal parliamentary life and parliamentary work. It's uh, through the internet uh, com committee meetings where are never like the same real as it is like in the physical meetings. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's like in every parliament, it can be national parliament or the local parliament or European parliament. If you have been already one, two mandates before, first of all, because you are more experienced, you know how the system is work, working all the time. You know exactly like how to table the amendments, how to table uh, the written questions to the European Commission, uh, how is the registering for the speeches on the plenary. You know everything very well that what you have to do to get this. If you're young, it takes at least one, two years, at least to get the real life, how it goes in the parliament. It's always the same. But on the, same hand, on the other hand, I think like when you're a new elected member, you are, you're always more idealistic. You can, like, it's, it's normal. You it's, have to prove exactly, yourself. Exactly. You are like more fresh, powerful. Yeah, I'm coming with a new idea, so I want to change this thing, I want to change this thing. Uh, and then after three, four years, unfortunately, there's like, okay. Parliamentary you, you cannot overturn it. <laughs> parliamentary work is like very long-term distance. You know, that's, uh, it has, you have to take this and this, this, this steps to have the result maybe in five or ten years. You have to change the political agenda and uh, to have a, like arguing with your colleagues from the different political groups and to change the political mindset inside of the countries first of all because then it, will, it depends about the political election results finally. That how, if you want to change the politics it means that you need support from the, from the public. So, uh, and then you have to get the, like the re-elected uh, for your own party members to the next elections. So that's why the old guys are more professional, of course, they're more experienced, but they are more hard to say, but they're sometimes more, you know, they're getting used to be as a, like the traditional old politicians uh, who's waiting for the next salary. What is your feeling? I, I wouldn't agree to the last sentence because I think even old members still have uh, have some, some well, it depends on, on the members, of course, but a lot of them, at least in our group, have still some driving force and they really want to change something. And uh, I agree that you need some time to learn a lot of stuff because it is uh, a new environment. But that is also true for anybody who enters the parliament. In any it's, job, yeah. actually. And it's, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's something that is also true for, uh, for every age group. It, you can come to the parliament at the age of 60, but that doesn't mean that you're making it better job than anybody who's coming here at the age of 20. And because you still need this time to learn how the committees work, how um, politics here work, that's also something different than a national parliament and everything. So I think this is, this is uh, quite similar. Um, however, with your, with your number, with the 60% of new members, I think the more interesting uh, thing is, and that's why I think the parliament itself changed um, over the course, uh, is that 60% are not just um, newly elected members, but they are from opposition parties. So in their home countries, they're in the opposition. So this parliament, for the first time, is not just supporting what the Council of Europe um, uh, wants to do, but is creating their own ways. And that is something that we saw when we're talking about the conditionality for rule of law, when we're talking about the increase of the, uh, of the annual budget. And so with all these points, there was the European Parliament, there was just strong saying, no, no, we are co-legislating. We're not here to just agree to what you've agreed, but we are here to, to take on our um, mandate seriously because we are the only directly elected representative of the European people. And so we're acting as it. And that's for the first time ever in this parliament. So I think it's a very special parliament this uh, um, I, I would like to go back uh, a bit more to the to the style of the new politicians and old politicians. I had a debate here uh, and uh, with, with two MEPs and the one was from Social Democrats. She came and she looked at the other person who was from Alternative for Deutschland, so from the right wing, and said, well, I'm not sitting at the same table with a fascist. <laughs> Um, we had a bit of a tricky situation because she walked away. So my question is to you. I mean, you also represent two sides of the political spectrum. Uh, what do you think about sitting down to with with your uh, not like with extreme opposition from you, right? Is it does it solve it? Does it so, so, something? Is it useful or not? I think so. First of all, uh, you invited me to to the talk, and uh, for that I have to think, okay, if I'm letting him sit here alone, he has the stage for all, for all, for himself. So he can say whatever nonsense he wants to. And I don't want to, to have 
that possibility because I think if he makes a point, I have to, to reply to that and uh, give a, co a counter argument. However, I personally draw the line at that point and that's where I don't know who, what member of the AfD was here, but um, there are certainly fascists in the AfD. Um, and um, I don't want to set a stage and I think, but then I think it's more the responsibility of journalists to not set a stage for people who are um, uh, denying that the Holocaust happened, who people who are denying the right to live for certain people, people who are using this platform to to rackle um, uh, Islamophobia or uh, homophobia or um, a calling for violence or anything. I think journalists have to think about that they are uh, providing a stage. And uh, if this stage is taken to, to do something harmful for the society, it should not be used. But if we're not talking about this, and today we're talking about uh, how to become a politician yeah, and how, how to, to be join, a different new politician. Yeah, and yep. how to join politics. I think it's uh, important to, to be present. And um, while we might not agree on a lot of issues or most of the issues, I think especially in this question, since we're both young, um, we, we might uh, have uh, something to, to discuss. And so in this instance, I say, okay, well, if, if, if you would start to say something that I'm, that I'm completely opposed again, then I can use the stage to also oppose it. And I think that's also important. This is all, all the you know, funniest thing because like, well, I'm, for me, it's, it's like a joke. Like if, if some parties or some members of the parliament or some ideologies are coming to say that we don't discuss, we don't uh, even argue, uh, we don't be uh, on the same discussion with those, 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 those members. Well, for me, it seems like very fascist way. Sorry, but like, so it means that one party is coming to say, no, those parties from this side, they're bad. They're bad, we don't agree with them, we will never argue with them. And you say, okay, but there was like some kind of call like democracy and elections and different kind of uh, ideas, different kind of uh, like the problems what we have in society. It's same thing, I think like I know many guys from AFD, like in every party, in every party from the left to the right side, there's always like some members, well, who I don't agree, okay, it's fine. And then many of them, I totally agree. Like, I think like you can't like have a situation when like the social democrats will say that no, we don't argue with that, we don't argue with you, because we don't like the things what you say about the pros with Iceland. So you're for more inclusive, inclusive so, debate. So, so, so in this way, okay, and, and then they are surprised why the, some kind of, you know, the conservative right-wing parties are raising, because of, for the public is that, okay, we see that, okay, there is a huge illegal migration, there is a problem, there is one party who's saying, okay, we don't like this problem, what we have, we have to solve the problem, and there's other party who says, no, 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 there's no problem, there's no problem at all. And the public says, okay, but who are we going to vote now? But that's, but that's not what's, what's happening. That's not what's happening. Uh, but, uh, what, uh, no, what's happening is that one party is saying, uh, we, is fakely uh, saying that we're having illegal migration um, when, uh, no, the migration, well, well, when the migration is legal. I mean, no, it's not legal. It's illegal. No, no, it's, it's completely legal. No, it's illegal. The right for asylum is, is, a, is a right that you have as a no, person. No, but if you're, if you're an economic you, migrant, you're not right for asylum. As long, long, as, long, as, long as you're crossing, this is, this as long as you're crossing, the, the if you're crossing, this is one of the topics where we can see that there are differences If you're buying the flight tickets with thousands of dollars to Belarus, you're an illegal migrant. You're not seeking for asylum. That's a difference. Of course they're seeking for asylum. That's why they're crossing the border. They're seeking for the good life, for the German taxpayers' money. That's a difference. There are no legal you. ways for them to cross the border, Difference. so they're Difference. using an illegal one. Difference. Yeah, let's however, let's let's the means are that. irrelevant because the international Difference. law is very clear Difference. that you are allowed yeah. to do let's, it let's in that But you have your opinion, you have your supporters. Mr. Mandelson, no, there's right. And no, Mr. there's no right for that. <laughs> <laughs> in the international law, I've also studied international law, and there is no right for the illegal migration. But finally, I just want to conclude, the problem is not that do you agree with me or not, or I agree with you. The problem is that if one side says, no, we don't like your ideas, you are bad guys, you are terrible. No, you, you, we have to destroy you. What? Well, this is the fascist way, like, I don't know, the link uh, who's the okay. former communist uh, party in you. Germany. No, no, but no. this is the way, thank like, you. how they did, like, on the 40s and 30s in the uh, central part of uh, Mr. Europe. Mr. Madison, Mr. Have... thank you. The topic of the debate was, was something else. But what we see here, of course, you come from different political spectrum, right? From the right and from the left. Of course, there are political differences. And it's, it's, sometimes it's, it can get, uh, get pretty heated. That is normal. 
And that's also that that goes for the sort of older politicians, and it also goes for the young politicians. There are different views, and that's that is good. That's why you have different voters voting for you. The the question is, uh, you know, we see the, those new faces, and, and you are those new politicians, and just wondering how how diff different your sort of. Uh, take on those things will be. And I know that there's no easy answer, but let me just conclude on maybe on a more personal uh, question. Uh, so now you're the member of European Parliament, where do, but where do you see yourself in three years when the term will be over? Uh, first, sorry, I, I really have to say a word. Um, so going that, back, you want to go back yeah, to I the Yeah, I want to go back event. for just one word. I think um, the tolerance ends at that moment where um, people want to destroy tolerance. That's the same way for democracy. So we don't have to uh, include people in the de democratic way if they want to destroy democracy. Hitler used democracy to destroy democracy. And that's the point where we have to, you can be opposing to migration. You can be um, uh, against uh, rules and laws and everything. You can be right wing, there's no problem about, right? That's why we have discussions, that's why we have a parliament. But, and that I agree gets very problematic if you have a party in which, uh, at least in Germany, half of it um, gets, uh, um, uh, they, they are being uh, looked into by the, uh, the uh, Secret Service to ensure that they are not breaking the foundation yeah. of, of, but of, so of that, democracy. That's what we discovered, and that's so the for those, yeah, and, and for those to not talk with them, I agree, because giving them, that's what I said, if you're giving the stage to those people, uh, you're just helping to destroy democracy, and that's something that we not want. And now for your other question, yeah. so in three years um, from now, I personally think that um, at least for the next term, I will be running again. Um, for the simple reason, we have a very weird um, um, time frame for the budget. And I'm doing a lot of budget-related files, and our budget is always seven years, um, while our uh, term is always five years. So the next term will also um, completely rediscuss the new budget, and this is something that I really want to work on. So on a personal level, this is something where I can really change uh, even more than now, and so I really want to do that and, um, and work on it, and that's why I'll be running um, again in three years. Um, however, I don't think um, that it's too healthy for young people to start uh, with like 27 as I did, um, or even younger as a politician and then continue to be a politician until you're four, uh, 60, 70, 80 you or something. You should do something before. Yeah, or in between. And I can imagine that I will uh, take some time in between to do something different and to realize something different. However, th I think that's also something that our generation is generally doing. I think a lot of people are questioning themselves whether they want to continue to work in the same job over and over again. And I think it's healthy to try out something new and to, to change uh, careers at a, at a certain time. But we will see what the future holds. And your future in three years? Should we go back to also the last topic? Oh no, I know. Of course, that you have all both learned that you know you need you need to keep the last word, and and then we will never end it. Well, so, I, I've just uh, to be very positive. I've never had any kind of problem to be in the debates uh, or to arguing okay. with the opposite side on the political landscape. We have in this house, we have like a lot of, you know, the official communist party members from Greece and Spain and Italy who are totally communist. They're praising Lenin and Stalin in this chamber on the speeches. And I can still argue with them. I can say that, no, you're wrong, in my opinion. I think they were masculars. I think there were terrible times. But I, I still, I can understand the fact you had your votes somehow, even if I don't like those voters, maybe. You had your votes. And that's why I think like it's it's very slippery way if we are uh, starting to go on the political landscape on this way that, no, those millions of voters all over the Europe, we don't like, they're stupid, they're bad, uh, they have uh, problems uh, with like the average life, but no, we don't argue with them because they're voting for the bad, bad parties, but we are the right ones. So that's why I really support the democracy. And I think, uh, well, even, even our good partner in the debate, uh, doesn't agree with us that the conservative so side of the parliament wants to uh, break the democracy or wants to go to the fascist world back. No, of course not. Uh, but uh, in three years, I'm not very sure that I'm here because like in 2023, in 14, Mar in 14 months, we have national elections. And of course, like in my opinion, that's, that, that's my position, is that the real decision making is going on in the Council of Europe between the governments and the European Commission. European Parliament is a nice place, 
of course. But I think that the real decision has to be solved. The main problems has to solve between the member states because it's the union of the so member states. So you want to go into the government? Of course. Of course, there's the real power. But you never know how the politics are going. Now, just now, we are the first party in the polls in Estonia, Conservative Party. Uh, we'll see in 14 we'll months see. how it goes. Uh, maybe I will run again in, in three years. Why not? Uh, and of course, I totally agree uh, with uh, Niklas, right? It's, uh, I think, like, if you're young, I think you should go just uh, out of the politics for some time, for the private sector, to see the real life, to be a taxpayer. Uh, because otherwise, I think if you're like 30, 40 years directly in the politics, you're, disappear you're disappearing from the real life. It's very good to have uh, arguments and debates on the political level, what we should do and how we should save the planet, but how it will infect the companies, the average taxpayers, like the normal people out of the politics. To really feel it and to not forget it, I think for some time we all have to be like on the private sector also. Thank you so much for this debate. It was a bit feisty, but uh, it, I hope also our viewers appreciated that and saw a small glimpse into the new generation of European politicians. Thank you and bye.